Hello everyone. Today we continue with computer system architecture course and our topic is instruction pipeline. In the previous videos we discussed parallel processing, pipelining, and the last video was on arithmetic pipeline. Pipeline processing can occur not only in the data stream, but in the instruction stream as well. The main three phases in the instruction cycle, the pitch, the code, and execute. The idea of instruction pipeline is that while we are executing an instruction, the next instruction can be read from memory. And moreover, while an instruction is executed, the next can be decoded and the next can be fetched. In the case of branch instructions here, the pipeline should be emptied. For example, if we have branch unconditionally to location XX, then the next instructions in the decode phase and in the pitch phase here will not be executed. And one solution, therefore, is to empty the pipeline. Consider a computer with two units, execution unit and pitch unit. Whenever the execution unit is not using the memory, the control unit can increase the program counter and read the next instruction into the pitch unit. A first in, first out buffer can be used to hold the instruction or instructions read from memory. In this case, in the first in, first out buffer, we may have several instructions waiting for decoding and processing. Computers with complex instructions require other phases in addition to the pitch and execute to process an instruction completely. In the most general case, the computer needs to process each instruction with the following sequence of steps. Pitch the instruction from memory, decode the instruction, calculate the effective address, fetch the operands from memory, execute the instruction, and store the results in the proper place. There are certain difficulties that will prevent instruction pipeline from operating in its maximum rate. First, different sigmas may take different times to operate on the incoming information. For example, pitching the operand from memory takes more time than calculating the effective address or executing the instruction itself, since we need to access memory for fetching the operand. Next, some segments are skipped for certain operations. For example, a register mode instruction does not need an effective address calculation. In addition to that, two or more segments may require memory access at the same time, causing one segment to wait until another is finished with the memory. Memory access conflicts are generally resolved by using two memory buses for accessing instructions and data in separate modules. Here we have the instruction bus and the separate data bus. Next, assume that the decoding of the instruction can be combined with the calculation of the effective address into one segment and assume also that the result is stored in processor registers so we can combine the execution of the instruction and the storing the results in one segment. Under these assumptions, the instruction pipeline is reduced to four segments. 
Sigma 1 is for fetching the instruction from memory. Sigma 2, decode and calculate the effective address. Sigma 3, fetch operand from memory. And Sigma 4, the execution and storing the results. If we have a branch instruction here, then the program counter should be updated and we have to empty the pipeline. And in case of interrupt, the pipeline should be emptied as well. We assume here that segments are of equal duration. In the timing diagram, the segments are represented by the symbols FI for pitch, DA for decode and calculate effective address, FO for pitch operand, and EX for execute. And it is also assumed that the computer has two memory modules, one for the instructions and one for the data. In this case, access to memory and the fetch instruction and fetch operand phases can be performed at the same time. The time in the horizontal axis is divided into steps of equal duration. With no branch instructions, each segment operates on different instructions. In step four, instruction one is being executed. The operand for instruction two is being fetched in segment FO. Instruction three is being decoded in segment DA. And instruction four is being fetched from memory in the FI segment. Assume that instruction three is a branch instruction. As soon as this instruction is decoded in DA in step four, the transfer from FI to DA of other instructions is halted until the branch instruction is executed in step six. If the branch instruction is taken, a new instruction is fished in step seven. And if not, the instructions fished previously in step four can be used. Next pipeline complex. In general, there are three major difficulties that cause the instruction pipeline to deviate from its normal operation. Resource conflicts, and these are caused by access to memory by two segments at the same time. And as I mentioned, most of these conflicts can be resolved by using separate instruction and data memories. Data dependency conflicts, and they arise when an instruction depends on the result of the previous instruction, but this result is not yet available. And the third difficulty is the branch difficulty that arises from branch and other instructions that change the value of the program counter. Regarding data dependency, the most straightforward method is to insert hardware interlocks. An interlock is a circuit that detects instructions whose source operands are destinations of instructions farther up in the pipeline. Detection of this situation causes the instructions whose source is not available to be delayed by enough clock cycles to resolve the conflict. This approach maintains the program sequence by using hardware to insert the required delays. Another technique called operand forwarding uses special hardware to detect a conflict and then avoid it by routing the data through special paths between pipeline segments. For example, instead of transferring an ALU result into a destination register, the hardware checks the destination operand and if it is needed as a source in the next instruction, it passes the result directly into the ALU input by passing the register file. This method requires additional hardware paths through multiplexers as well as the circuit that detects the conflict. A procedure employed in some computers 
is to give the responsibility for solving data complex problems to the compiler that translates the high level programming language into a machine language program. The compiler for such computers is designed to detect a data conflict and reorder the instructions as necessary to delay the loading of the conflicting data by inserting a no operation instructions. And this method is referred to as delayed load. Next standing of the branch instructions. One of the major problems in operating an instruction pipeline is the occurrence of branch instructions. A branch instruction can be conditional or unconditional. An unconditional branch always alters the sequential program flow by loading the program counter with the target address. In this case, the pipeline should be empty and the contents of the pipeline are not useful. In a conditional branch, the control selects the target instruction if the condition is satisfied or the next sequential instruction if the condition is not satisfied. Pipeline computers employ various hardware techniques to minimize the performance degradation caused by instruction branching. One way of handling a conditional branch is to prefetch the target instruction in addition to the instruction following the branch. Both are saved until the branch is executed. If the branch condition is successful, the pipeline continues from the branch target instruction. An extension of this procedure is to continue fetching instructions from both places until the instruction decision is made. At that time, control chooses the instruction stream of the correct program flow. You can consider this case as if you are having two pipelines, pipe one, pipe two. And depending on the condition, we are going to select one of these pipelines. Another possibility is the use of a branch target buffer. The branch target buffer is an associative memory included in the fifth segment of the pipeline. Associative memory is a content addressable memory and it is unlike random access memory where we retrieve the contents by the address. In RAM we apply the address and we retrieve the contents. Here, any register usually has two parts, the key and the value. The input is searched and compared with all the keys. On match, we retrieve the value on the second part of the register. Each entry in the branch target buffer consists of the address of a previously executed branch instruction and the target instruction for that branch. It also stores the next few instructions after the branch target instruction. When the pipeline decodes a branch instruction, it searches the associative memory, branch target buffer, for the address of the instruction. If it is there, the instruction is available directly and the prefix continues from the new path. And if not, the pipeline shifts a new instruction stream and stores the target instruction in the branch target buffer. The advantage of this scheme is that the branch instructions that have occurred previously are readily available in the pipeline without interruption. And this scenario, associative memory, will be discussed in more detail in chapter 12. The use of branch target buffer is useful in the case we have loops. Another procedure that some computers use is a branch prediction. A pipeline with branch prediction uses some additional logic to guess the outcome of a conditional branch instruction before it is executed. 
The pipeline then begins prefetching the instruction stream from the predicted path. A correct prediction eliminates the wasted time caused by branch penalties. A procedure employed in most risk processors is the delayed branch. According to this procedure, the compiler detects the branch instructions and rearranges the machine language code sequence by inserting useful instructions that keep the pipeline operating without interruptions. An example is the insertion of no operation instruction after a branch instruction. This causes the computer to fetch the target instruction during the execution of the no operation instruction, allowing a continuous flow of the pipeline. For today, that's all. Thank you.